Hi everyone and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to detail the connection from a beam to a column. So now let us zoom in at 1. So over here we have a beam connected to a column over here. And there are some notes that we need to take. Number 1, the cap plate is clashing with this flange over here. So we need to make a cut in this top flange. The bottom flange is fine however, and as you can see the stiffener plate over here will prevent us from using a very tall unequal angle section. So those are the main things that we need to keep in mind. So let's get started with detailing this connection. So left click on this, click on edit type, click on edit under the modify parameters row and I'll be going through each one of these settings over here so, so in this tab you can choose the section that we are using here so right now we are using two clip angles if you are choosing the double option over here if you choose the single left option it means that you only have one clip angle on the left if you choose single right then you only have one clip angle on the right so in this case, I'll be using double, and for the angle profile size, I'll be referring to the British standards. So scroll down to UK, and find roll steel unequal angle over here. And I'll be choosing the smallest size over here. And this setting here, long leg side, it refers to where this uh, longer side will be. So if you choose secondary, it will be on the beam. If you choose main, then it will be touching or be oriented to the columns web. So in this case, I'll be choosing secondary because I want the longer side on this beam here instead of on the column web. And one thing to note is that if you choose main, you will see that it will be clashing with the flange of the column, so this is definitely not the correct option. So I will go through each of these numbers here, 1 to 4. So cutback refers to the distance from this point here to the web of your beam. And if I were to set this to say 0 0.5 meters, you will see that the beam will be set out 0 0.5 meters. So now you see what this setting changes. So for this case, I'll just keep it at the default value of 1 centimeter. And cut parallel doesn't really affect us even if we were to uncheck it or check it. As you can see, number 2 over here refers to cut parallel. And we don't have a slope beam, so it doesn't concern us at all. Cleat clearance to main basically refers to the clearance between the cleat over here and the web of the column. So if I set this to 1 centimeter, you can see that there's some spacing here as measured from this point to this point here. So I will keep the cleat clearance to main at 0 because I want the cleat to be touching the web of the column. And cleat clearance to the secondary refers to the spacing or the clearance between this point here and the face of this uh, beam's web. So if I set this to say 0 0.01, you'll see that it'll move out towards the right. So in this case, I want the cleat to be touching the secondary at the web. So I'll just keep it at 0. Moving on to clip welds, I will not be using any welds at all because I would be doing an example of a simple connection so it involves no wells at all. Now moving on to top cope. This is the most important part because we need to deal with the clash between the beam's top flange and the cap plate of the column. So over here there are two options. You have either a line or perpendicular. And for me there hasn't been any main difference that I can see and from my experience I'll just keep it at the line and for the top cope I will just choose the option of cope and then 
since this is not moved back enough, I can just change the cope length. But since there are other options, we can play around with some of the other options. So none basically means that you're not going to have any cope over here and all the options here are grayed out, meaning that you cannot access them at all. And trim basically will only cut these edges over here, but then the area near the web will be untouched. And chamfer refers to cuts in the corners over here. And cut and flush has some similarity to this trim. It's just that the cut and flush option has a thinner middle section over here. So I'll just revert back to cope because it's sufficient. And I'll go and extend the cope length to about 10 centimeters. So you can see that now the top flange of the beam is no longer going to clash with the cap plate. And this gap horizontal setting over here, it will only affect how far the setback will be. So if you choose from secondary, it will be like this. If you choose from main flange, it will be set out by quite a bit. So if you were to choose the from main flange option, it will measure from this part of the flange to this part of the flange over here. So basically it's measuring from the flange of the column to the flange of the beam, as far as I can understand. So moving on to the from secondary axis, basically it measures from the middle of the column to the flange over here and the final option from secondary over here, from secondary EN something, it's, it's uh, cut out partially. So this will measure from this part over here of your clip angle. So for this case, I'll just keep it at from secondary axis so that it will be easier to refer to and we'll set it to about 11 centimeters so this is about right already and gap vertical setting there are quite a few options you either have uh, outside main inside main which is almost the same as outside main outside secondary is almost the same as the previous two options K distance is slightly higher up in terms of the level of this web. And inside secondary, it means that the web part of the beam will be below the clip angle. Okay, so this code depth over here will adjust how far this web will go down. So right now it's currently set to three centimeters here. And you can either measure from many points over here, and you can see number two is measured from quite a few points as shown here as dimension. So in this case, I will just uh, say play around with it and say put it at zero. If you put it at zero, basically you will have no cope at all. If you put it at 0 0.01, for example, it will still be a little too close to the cap plate, so it's better to have more clearance, so keeping things at 0 0.03 will be just sufficient. And by playing around with the cope radius, for example, if I were to put this at 0, there's no change. If I put it at, say, 0 0.5, there doesn't seem to be any uh, change other than this cope being you know non-existent anymore so I'll just keep it at zero for this case and for bottom cope we don't need any bottom cope because there's no clash at the bottom flange and for both parameters I'll be using a British standard so I'll find the EN14399-3 option and I'll choose the 16 millimeter bolt and I'll choose a grade of 8.8 .8. and I'll keep the bolt location at the main at site and bolt location secondary at site as well so it'll be installed at site 
and these invert options here basically just refer to whether or not you want to invert the location of the bolt head over here so if I were to click on this the bolt head is now over on this side and the washer is over here so it's not really useful I'll keep it like this and if you were to check this tick box over here for invert bolt at secondary basically you're just inverting the location of the bolt head and the washer for the bolts that are slotted through the beam so in this case it's not necessary and this align to slope of secondary or to the beam essentially it doesn't really do anything because our beam is not sloped at all so now moving on to the horizontal bolts so we can set the set out at the main part here which is this section over here and this section over here so you can either choose angle back bolt centers total and angle gauge which is almost the same as uh, bolt centers except that for this option somehow the bolts at the secondary over here will actually invert and DAST gap is almost the same as angle back over here so for this case I'll be using the bolt centers and number per clip basically refers to the number of bolts that you have on each clip side so if you look at the front view over here on this one side we have one and on this other side we have one if I were to change this to two we'll have two on this side and two on this side so in this case one on each side is sufficient and the back mark is basically a measurement from the web of your beam to the middle of your bolt so right now if I were to change this to 0.1 it will be spaced out so that the middle of the bolt will be pretty much near the edge of the clip angle so in this case I'll just keep it at 0.05 and for number per clip for the secondary section you can either choose angle back or beam back or sorry you can either choose angle back or beam end so if you are using angle back it will be like this if you choose beam end it will be moved out slightly more to the left over here and number per clip basically is the same as for the set out at main if you put in two the if you put in two basically you'll have two sets of uh, bolt groups at your beam so in this case I only need one and for the back mark over here basically it refers to where you want to place these uh, bolts at the beam basically you can either place it further this way or further that way so if I put it at 0.1 it will be beyond the clip angle so it's useless so basically we'll just keep it at say 0.05 and for vertical bolts over here we need to keep note that we do not want anything sticking out over here so you can either choose the set out measurement to be angle from secondary which means that it will be set all the way down for our clip angle over here which is not correct because we do not want it to be clashing with the stiffener but then again you can always change the set out distance to say about zero and then you can see that it's all the way up here then now we can just play around with the value say put in 0 0.04 and it looks about right maybe just one more centimeter yep it looks just about right in middle basically well as the name implies it will be placing the clip angle and bolts at the middle roughly so choosing both from secondary or angle from secondary or middle it doesn't really matter that much as long as you know it as long as you know what you're doing and for the start distance I've already calculated the start distance should vary from 0 
0.019 meters to about 0.104 meters and the intermediate distance should vary from 0.035 meters to about 0.14 meters. So I'll just keep this as close as possible, say about 0.05 because we have some type constraints down here or maybe add it up to a bit more slightly, so about 0.06 and the end distance basically refers to the distance from the middle of this end bolt to the end of your clip angle. So if you keep the end distance the same as your start distance, then you will have a symmetrical look over here. And bolt stagger lower, you can play around with these options. And if you choose main, basically you'll, it will stagger the bolts on the main side over here. If you choose secondary, it will stagger on the secondary side. If you choose main one, basically it will cut one of your bolts out and secondary one will cut one of your bolts out on the secondary side. So I will just choose no because I do not want any staggering. And this uh, clip angle length over here is pretty much fixed. As of right now, so there's nothing to change over here. As for slotted holes, I will not have any slotted holes other than the holes for the bolts. And I will not be using any shim plates. So I'll just click on OK. And I will click on Apply and click on OK. And now we can see that the clip angle connection fits nicely. So it does not clash with the stiffener plate down here and it doesn't clash with the cap plate and the beams over here do not clash with the cap plate, especially for the top flange. And that's it for this video. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more Revit tutorials or tutorials on other civil engineering softwares, do consider subscribing because it's free. And smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and let's get the subscription count to about 1000. I'll greatly appreciate it. And as always, I hope you're safe in these unprecedented times. And as always, keep learning and goodbye.